It is time for oral questions, and I recognize the Leader of the Official Opposition. Speaker, my first question this morning is to the Premier. In their report this week, the Financial Accountability Office revealed the deep health care cuts hidden in the Ford government budget. One of their key findings was that despite the Premier's claims, health spending will decrease by $2.7 billion when compared with the 2018 budget. The FAO was unable to provide details of those cuts because the Ford government wouldn't allow them to. Why is the Premier hiding the details of these health care cuts from the public? Questions addressed to the Premier. Uh, Minister of Finance. Or to the Minister of Finance. Well, thank you very much uh, for the question, and thank you, Speaker. Today, uh, we truly hope that uh, your government will join, or your opposition party, will join the government in uh, supporting what at uh, protecting what matters most and if you actually looked through the 200 or 383 page budget you will find that the health budget has increased by 1.3 billion dollars spending to hospitals is up 384 million dollars spending in home care is up 267 million dollars we are providing $1.75 billion to build 15,000 new long-term care beds. Many of them are already under construction. More than 7,000 of them have been announced. So I would urge the Leader of the Opposition to open to any page of 383-page budget and see what we're Thank you very much. The supplementary question. Well, Speaker, everyone in Ontario knows that this finance minister tried to sell his budget as something that it completely is not, and now the FAO is laying bare the facts, because the FAO is nonpartisan, and he works for the people of Ontario. He is not a partisan. His office has other insights into the deep and reckless cuts the government has planned for our health care system. Under the Ford government scheme, hospital funding will be effectively cut, not even keeping pace with inflation. And of the $2.7 billion in cuts, one of the Order. deepest will be to children's Order. mental health. Which will be slashed by 15 per cent. Can the Premier provide any justification whatsoever to cuts to children's mental health while there are over 12,000 children on a wait list for services, most waiting at least 18 months to get that service, or to hospital funding while patients continue to be stacked up in hallways from the Liberals' scheme of health care? Well, thank you very much. And it's interesting that the uh, leader of the opposition refers to the Liberals, considering they supported them all along the yes, way yes. on this, on, on the creation of the hallway health care problem. To help with that, Premier, or, uh, uh, Speaker, as I said, we are adding 27 billion dollars over 10 years in new hospitals including $17 billion over 10 years in capital improvements. Speaker, we are putting an unprecedented $1.9 billion into mental health and addictions in the province of Ontario. And the one that I talk about almost every day, and I cannot believe as an MPP who has seniors coming into their office over and over with dental, with dental work that needs to be done that we cannot afford, I cannot Response. believe that this government is going to vote against giving $90 million to vote Order. to, to, to 100,000 seniors on low income, of low income. Thank you. Final supplementary. Well, what I can't believe is that this callous government is making yet another cut to vulnerable children in their budget, Speaker. That's what I cannot believe. Families know the Premier has no plan to cut health care wait times, but Order. they definitely see a plan to cut health care services. The independent FAO is blunt, Speaker. In 40 years, in 40 years in this province, only one government has pulled off health care spending restraint of the kind proposed by this Ford government, and that Premier was Mike Harris, Order. the last Conservative government. The same Mike Harris who closed 28 hospitals, fired 6,000 nurses, 
nurses and eliminated 7,000 hospital beds. Why is this Premier taking us backwards to an era of deep health care cuts, putting families at risk, and deepening the Liberal hallway medicine crisis? Uh, but, I'm going to call the members to order. The member for King Vaughan, come to order. The member for Kitchener-Conestoga, come to order. The member for Whitby, come to order. Start the clock. Minister of Finance to reply. Thank you very much. Again, Speaker, I've said it almost every day in this legislature. The previous government was spending $40 million a day more than they took in. Mm -hmm. We are bringing, and in fact, the FAO has confirmed that our government is delivering a measured, thoughtful, and responsible path to balance. It's credible. It's a plan laid out in Budget 2019. It will put the province on a sustainable footing, but it also delivers $26 billion back to the people of Ontario. I cannot believe that this, after, this morning the NDP will not support $2 billion in care tax credits given to 300,000 low- and middle-income families. 300,000 families are waiting for that $2 billion care tax credit, and you're not going to support it. I can't believe that they will not support Response. the $2 billion in the low-income individual and fax, uh, family tax credit. Speaker, these, there are $26 billion that they're voting against. Wow. The member for Waterloo will come to order. The member for Davenport will come to order. The member for Hamilton East Stony Creek will come to order. The next question, the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. My next uh, question is to the Premier, but I think there is nothing responsible about prioritizing beer over health care, Speaker. That's right. Nothing at all responsible about that. But my question is about, uh, about Ontario municipalities who are fighting back against the government's Bill 108, an unbalanced scheme that gives developers the power to override everything from municipal planning to environmental regulation and brings back the much-hated Ontario Municipal Board under a new name. Earlier this week, the Premier finally admitted to municipalities that he had made serious mistakes, but the Ford government is still ignoring requests to give municipalities time to comment on, on this bill, Bill 108. Why is the government ramming this legislation through and once again ignoring serious concerns of municipalities? Questions to the Premier. Municipal Affairs. Referred to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Speaker. Uh, to you, to the Honourable Member. You know, it's very interesting, Speaker, that yesterday we had the Ontario Home Builders Association here at Queen's Park. And I know that members from all three parties uh, were there as well as, uh, as my friend from the Green Party. Sorry about that. So, and everyone acknowledged, everyone, everyone on her bench acknowledged what the Ontario home builders were saying yesterday, that we're going to need to build housing supply in this province. We can't wait another minute. And that's exactly what we've moved forward with our housing supply action plan and build 108, more homes, more choice. That's exactly what we're doing. We consulted widely across this province, including our municipal partners. But listen, Speaker, you know it's the will of the legislature whether that uh, vote after question period will carry for Bill 108. And I'm sure, and we'll be watching very closely, that Response. those same members that had the cocktails and canapes for the Ontario Home Builders Association last night will see Order. where they stand when that Bill 108 yeah, gets yeah. voted. Start the clock. Supplementary question. Well, Speaker, to have a minister that doesn't understand it's about building communities, not just homes, is pretty worrisome, pretty troubling. 
If the Order. government really wanted to consult with municipal partners, as he likes to pretend that they are, on Bill 108, they wouldn't be scrambling to ram this bill through this legislature. But with less than two weeks left in the legislature, uh, the government has only scheduled a single day of, of committee hearings. So they can have uh, canapes Order. and wine with their friends from the home builders, but they can't give municipalities the opportunity Order. to discuss a piece of legislation. Stop the clock. I apologize to the Leader of the Opposition. But Start the clock. Conclude your question. They don't have time to spend listening to the concerns of municipalities from one end of this province to, uh, to the other on a bill that is going to have serious implications in terms of municipal planning and environmental protection? See, speaker, where is their priority? Will this government do the right thing and extend the committee hearings over the summer? They can even serve, serve wine and canopies if they want, or will they ram through? again Order. yet another unworkable scheme that nobody in this province that is a municipal leader actually wants. Thank you. Minister. Speaker, through you to the Leader of the Opposition, she can talk about my friends in the development industry. Well, I'll tell you something, her caucus looked pretty friendly with them last night. my friend, Speaker, any partner that wants to build more housing. I want to say, Speaker, to that millennial couple who don't see a path to home ownership, I want to talk to them. I want them to say and them to know that they have a government that understands that we need to build more homes and more choice. And I want to work with any partner in any industry, whether it's in the public sector or the private sector. We need friends to build more homes and to have more choice. They got a lot of friends on this Fonts. side of the House, Speaker, and they had them when they were in opposition, and they have them now that they're in government. Stop the clock. The House will come to order. The government side will come to order. Start the clock. Final supplementary. Speaker, you know, this past summer the government signed an agreement with the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, and in it they endorsed the principle of regular consultation with municipalities and made a commitment to cooperate with local governments when considering new legislation that would have a municipal impact. The Premier made a mockery of that commitment with his budget and has been scrambling to undo that damage uh, all this past week. Municipalities have made it very clear that bringing back the OMB might be what their developer friends want in the government, but it's not what is best for the communities that municipal leaders represent. Municipal councils in Grimsby, in uh, Gray County, in Southwest Middlesex and Markham have all passed resolutions rejecting that scheme. Will the Premier honour his commitment, admit this bill, like his budget, is not workable, and stop ramming legislation through Question. just for their development friends? Please take your seat. Minister to reply. Again, I find it very passing strange that the Leader of the Opposition continues to slag home builders and people that actually provide hope to people. Her caucus didn't seem to have any problem in meeting with these home builders yesterday, these people who are providing hope, Opposition look them in the order. face and say that they agree that the elephant in order. the room is we need to build a million homes to be able to order. satisfy demand. I just can't understand why that member is so far out of step with all of her caucus. Order. Speaker, I'm going to make no apologies. The first thing I did as minister was I increased the opportunity to meet with the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. I moved from every two months under the previous government to every month. And in fact, Speaker, I meet with them a lot more 
than once a month. I meet with them almost on a weekly basis, and I'll continue to meet with them, Speaker. I'll continue to consult with them, but make no mistake, we're going to build more homes and provide more choice. Our, our government is committed to it. She can, she can continue. To Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It seems appropriate at this time to remind the members that this is the Parliament of Ontario. Start the clock. The next question, the Leader of the Opposition. My next question is also to the Premier. You know, the fallout from the Ford government budget continues to have a devastating impact, in, uh, impact on students in our classrooms. Today, we're learning more de details of the impact on French language school boards. The Montevier Catholic Board said that, says that 40 teachers will be losing positions. The Viamont Board says that they are being forced to shed 22 teaching positions. And these cuts don't just mean fewer teachers, as we all know, Speaker. They mean fewer courses and educational opportunities for students. Is the pre Premier still arguing that these cuts won't have an impact? Questions to the Premier. Minister of Education. Refer to the Minister of Education. Well, stand in this house to today and say we have a very good working relationship with our francophone partners and the fact of the matter is we're working very closely to ensure that we're growing francophone education like never before we're increasing our investments and we're working very closely with them and you know the fact of the matter is when we take a look at our overall situation in Ontario again we're spending $36 million a day on interest, on the money that we owe just to make ends meet. We have to go out to the people we're transferring dollars to and say, please work with us. Surely, surely school boards across this province can find one to four cents on the dollar from within as opposed to hitting the front lines. Because again, we have been told Response. loud and clear from one end of this province to the other by teachers, parents and students that there's a lot of waste in school boards and surely they should have been looking within first. Thank you very much. Thank you. The supplementary question. Well, these cuts are especially devastating to Franco-Ontarians who have already seen this government destroy a French-language university and the French-language uh, services commissioner. Right. So once again, the Premier is hitting this community with even more cuts. It's not fair to them, Speaker, and it's especially unfair to students who are losing teachers, watching class sizes grow and seeing course options vanish. Will the Premier admit that these cuts have consequences, consequences uh, to French students, and reverse those cuts now? Do the right thing for a change. Minister of Education. Well, again, Speaker, I have to remind the, the Leader of the Opposition that our government understands the importance of French education for many families across this province, and we're preserving the history and the future of French language and across Ontario, as I said, in, Franco, in French Catholic as well as French public institutions. Just this past week, my seatmate, the President of the Treasury Board, on behalf of Minister Mulroney, opened uh, Viola Leger near Curtis in south of Peterborough, and that's good news for us. You know, and we're investing like never before. We're investing $1.8 billion through the Grants for Student Needs. This represents an increase of more than $16 million than what was committed from the Liberal government in the previous year. And we're going to continue to work with our partners Response. to ensure that French education remains an important part of our children's overall education. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question. The member from Mississauga, Erin Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Yesterday, we learned of our government's plan to begin a call for development process 
to revitalize Ontario Place. After years of neglect from the previous government, it is fantastic to hear that our government is taking concrete steps to engage in a worldwide search for a partner or partners to help us make Ontario Place a world-class destination once again. There is so much potential for that site, as big uh, for a site as big as Ontario Place. It is, its location also means that the site could be an economic boon for both the province of Ontario and the city of Toronto. Can the Premier please let the House know what our government for the people has in store in the immediate future for the Ontario Place site? Questions to the Premier. Well, for, for you, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank our great MPP from the great state of Mississauga, Aaron Mills. <laughs> yes, 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 yesterday, uh, yeah, I know. Y yesterday, you can't take a little joke. But, anyways, uh, yesterday, uh, Mr. Speaker, our Minister of Infrastructure and Minister of Opposition Tourism, Governor Culture, Order. and Sports. Great, made a great announcement, an absolutely incredible announcement for a destination that this country has never seen before. We're putting proposals out for ideas across the world, and that's going to be uh, open for the next few months. We're going to be reviewing it, but it's going to be an incredible, incredible destination for, for families. And Mr. Speaker, there's two things Response. we aren't going to do at Ontario Place. The first thing we aren't going to do, Mr. Speaker, we aren't building a casino. The second thing we aren't going to do is there was a proposal from Mayor Tory that he wanted to build Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary question. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Speaker, to the Premier for his response. I echo his sentiments that he shared about his experiences, and I am sure many members of this House have fond memories of Ontario Place as well. It is a shame that current generation were not able to experience the site. However, Speaker, the site is 48 years old and need to be reimagined for the 21st century. We have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to create a truly great attraction one that will be something Ontarians will be proud of and will attract tourists from around the world. Speaker, can the Premier please tell the House more about the call for submissions process and what our government envisioned for the future of this site? The questions again to the Premier. For, for you, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank our great MPP from Mississauga. Yeah, no, yeah, we have so many all-stars over here, it's amazing. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> oh boy, M M Mr. Speaker, we have some great ideas. Destination, again, the likes of which this province has never seen. We all grew up, M Mr. Speaker. I'm sure you went to Ontario Place, and and uh, a lot of folks over in the opposition and our party grew up there, going there. What a what a highlight! I know I had some great times in the in the summertime, <laughs> going to the Manshaw, but. <laughs> it's going to be consist. It's going to, it's going to consist. Of, it's going to. It's going to consist of a destination that can be used 365 days a year, not just in the in the uh, summertime. Even though it's beautiful down there in the summer. Response. We can't wait till we see the proposals. We look forward to working with the city of Toronto, making sure that the exhibition uh, place and uh, Ontario Place acts as one destination. Thank you. Thank you. Say to the member for Hamilton East, Stony Creek, we don't need the buzzer. <laughs> Next question, the member for Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. Good morning, Speaker. My question is to the, to the Premier. Speaker, since coming to office, the Premier has made some shocking interventions into private contracts. Who could forget when he ripped up Ali Khan Velshi's contract at OPG, costing taxpayers a half a million dollars? He also ripped up contracts at Hydro Order. One, which cost Ontario ratepayers $103 million U.S. in bungled contracts. Speaker, now the Premier has made it Government come to order. his comrade, the Finance Minister, and him were well speaker they were just warming up they claim they can expropriate 
without compensation whenever the glorious leader demands it. Speaker, what contracts do they plan on ripping up next? The question has been put to the Premier. Members, please take their seats. Premier. Oh, Mr. Speaker, I'm actually having a lot of fun today. <laughs> you know, Mr. Speaker, um, I'm, I'm sure the MPP from, from Essex was talking about the uh, beer store. The, the monopoly that we've seen since, what was it, I think it was since 1926, somewhere around there, that three multinationals, huge multinational global companies controlling controlling the choice of the consumer in Ontario. The only place in the world, by the way, and it's, it's not a sin, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'll put my bottom dollar on it, Mr. Speaker, that when they are in the convenience store and they're in, in, in the retail stores and, they're, and it's a hot summer day, I'm looking over there, there's going to be a lot of thirsty mouths going into those convenience stores to get a cold beer. But <laughs> it's also going to be available in retail stores. So just imagine, Mr. Speaker, Response. I had some folks from the U.S. up here yesterday, and I told them about the beer battle. They looked at us like we had three heads. <laughs> that you, what, you can't go into a retail store and buy a steak and food and pick up a case of beer. Thank you. Thank you. The supplementary question. That is, Speaker, that is unbelievable of an answer from the Premier. Absolutely nothing of an answer. Speaker, just. The government side will come to order. I apologize to the member for Essex for interrupting him. Start the clock. The member for Essex has the floor. Trade experts and business analysts have looked at the Premier's beer store scheme and the reviews. Speaker, about as bad as his approval rating right now. <laughs> Speaker, the, uh, the highlights include, and I quote, flirting with extreme legal danger. Speaker, a public policy gaffe of epic proportions, a horse galloping amok in a hospital approach to public policy. Speaker, the Premier seems to forget populists are supposed to be popular. Speaker, so why, why is he plowing ahead? with this risky and, risky and expensive scheme that could end up costing taxpayers a billion dollars, Speaker. Why are you putting Government that on the backs of the taxpayers for your pension for beer? Stop the clock. Stop the clock. The member for Sault Ste. Marie must come to order. The member for Niagara West must come to order. The member for Markham Stouffville must come to order. Start the clock. Premier to reply. Uh, Minister of Finance. Referred to the Minister Thank of Finance. Thank you very much. Uh, to, be, to be clear, to the people of Ontario uh, who come to may not be aware, the government does not own the beer store, as many people believe. It is owned by three multinational global beer companies. Speaker, our parliamentary system, as you know, gives us the tools to get out of bad Opposition deals signed by the previous Liberal government. Our legislation ensures that we will get the best possible deal for consumers order. and taxpayers, and we will not be held hostage by multinational companies. Speaker. This sweetheart deal that the Liberals sign is a terrible deal for Ontario consumers and small businesses. Left alone as the NDP would want, this unfair deal would continue for six more years. You have to wonder Response. why these multinational corporations are so opposed to us selling their products in more convenience stores. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Essex come to order. The member for Niagara Falls come to order. The member for Waterloo come to order. Next question. The member. Oh, I think it's time for an independent question. Yeah. I recognize the member for Don Valley West. Okay. 
Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Education. Um, I'm joined, as I said earlier this morning, by a group of students from my community of Don Valley West and from Don Valley East. Mr. Speaker, the class size changes being implemented by this government will have a direct impact on these students who will find themselves sitting in classes with more students, in schools with fewer adults, and with fewer optional courses available to them. The minister has previously used academic outcomes in countries like China and Vietnam to justify the increase in class size. Both jurisdictions have very test-oriented, highly competitive education systems with notably high levels of student anxiety and depression. A 2019 UNICEF study points to the pressures of school in Vietnam as a major contributor to mental health problems in teenagers. Could the minister share with us all this morning the studies that she has used that demonstrate a direct link between increased class size and improved student outcomes without accompanying deterioration in student mental health and well-being? Questions to the Minister of Education. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I, I look forward to uh, continuing this discussion because, you know, I think it's rather rich hearing from the member opposite uh, her questioning of the manner in which we based our decisions to go forward with education after the disastrous manner in which they totally derailed education in Ontario over the span of 15 years. They actually destroyed our, our students' opportunity to learn math in a proper way. They destroyed the atmosphere in the school, creating Absolutely. mental health issue after mental health issue. So the study that has led the way and informed the policy that we're making was based on the responses of 72 thousand people from across yeah, yeah. Ontario well, last fall. Seventy two thousand people chose to take time to either response. participate in a telephone town hall, online survey or written support, or, or submissions to tell us how to fix the mess that that member opposite made to educate. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The member for Don Valley East will come to order. I recognize again the member for Don Valley West to do her supplementary. Mr. Speaker, well, I, I'm, I'm interested to know how many of those people actually said increased class size. But, Mr. Speaker, I had the pleasure of attending the opening of the beautiful new Sioux North High School, as the minister did in Sioux Lookout last week. The building is impressive, and it'll be a community asset for years to come. But even more impressive are the staff and students of the Kuwait and Patricia District School Board, and I know the minister agrees. As she knows, Indigenous youth is the fastest growing group of young people in Ontario. We need them to be at their very best, but they face challenges that the students here today do not. For they often have to travel thousands of kilometres to get to high school where they're without the support of their community. They're dealing with intergenerational trauma of residential schools. And for all those reasons and more, they need supports in their high schools so they can graduate and go on to college, university, or skilled training. One of the brilliant supports that the Kuwait and Patricia Board has put in place Question. is grad coaches. Mr. Speaker, I hope the minister had a chance to meet some of the teachers, support staff, and community elders who are these grad coaches. Mr. Speaker, Given that the administration of the Kuwait and Patricia Board is planning for staff cuts as a result of the class size increases, can the minister today guarantee that the supports that are actually and demonstrably improving opportunity for Indigenous students will not be cut? Thank you. Response by the Minister of Education. Thank you very much. It almost feels like this is a law ball, and I appreciate the question very much. And a yeah, and yes. To the member opposite, absolutely. It was a great day in, in Sioux North and Sioux Lookout last week. And you know, the vice principal of that particular school, Jenny, she was almost in tears when she said, Thank you. Thank you for expanding the grad coach program. I chose to expand to out of a pilot program that the Liberals facilitated, it, I expanded the program to touch. 37 different coaches and 31 school boards to provide support to Indigenous students as they pursue their diploma. It's something that's working incredibly well. It's something that the member opposite probably should have thought about expanding during her time yeah. over the last 15 years. 15 years. But let me tell you, we're also investing. We're also Order. investing in $3.25 million to support the implementation of the newly released curriculum that we announced in Thunder Bay last week. Response. And I look forward, I look forward to working with our Indigenous partners as we meet in June to talk about how else we can better support our Indigenous students across Ontario. Thank you very much.
The next question is the member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Finance. Over the past month, we've heard from people across the province about our government's plan to protect what matters most. Hearing from my constituents has made one thing very clear to me. Budget 2019 was a resounding success. After 15 years of liberal tax and spending policies, the people of Ontario were tired and wanted change. Finally, their government has put forward a plan that puts people first and will restore accountability and trust in our province's finances. I look forward to joining all my colleagues to vote in favour of the Protecting What Matters Most Act later on today. Would the minister please tell the House the important changes the people of Ontario can expect if the legislation passes today? Minister Finance. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. The Protecting What Matters Most Act turns the page on 15 failed Liberal budgets, waste, mismanagement and hydro scandals. Finally, the people of Ontario have a government that is committed to being open about how we spend their money. The proposed Fiscal Sustainability Transparency and Accountability Act puts people first and restores accountability and trust in the province's finances once again. This is a huge step towards reducing the deficit we inherited from the previous government. As I said earlier, they were spending $40 million a day more than they brought in. We look forward to bringing transparency to the people of Ontario and hope that all members of this House vote in favour of protecting what matters most. Thank you. The supplementary. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for his response. Trust, transparency and accountability have been absent for far too long in Ontario. Speaker. By reversing this trend, we can implement our plan to protect what matters most while respecting taxpayers and being fully transparent in our, in our decisions. We're putting people first in everything we do. We're providing relief to families and to individuals. We're making Ontario open for business and open for jobs. And we're doing it all in order to protect the essential services that the people across Ontario rely on. Would the minister explain how the Protecting What Matters Most Act will help us fulfill these commitments, bring relief, and ensure the sustainability of our critical public services? Mr. Finance. Thank you, Speaker. We cannot wait to bring the Protecting What Matters Most Act for third reading in just a few more minutes. It's unfortunate that the NDP have already made their opposition to this bill clear, but it's not too late for them to change their minds. It's not too late to join us in voting in favour of the CARE tax credit, which will provide 300,000 families with up to 75 per cent of their eligible child care expenses. The NDP can opposition. still vote for modernizing the Skilled Trades and, Account and Apprenticeship Act, which will make it easier for young people to get the skills they need to find a well-paying job. They can still support the PTSD Awareness Day, an important sign of progress as our government continues to make historic investments in mental health. Speaker, the NDP have the opportunity to do the right thing now Opposition and join us order. in protecting what matters Response. most. The next question, the member from Muskegawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Premier. Given the drastic cuts from this government, education future in French in the northwest of Ontario is in danger. Last week, I met several teachers of the Francophone school board of my region. They were in my office to share their concerns regarding the cuts in education. Does the Premier want to let the Francophones know that their children's education is not a priority for his government. The question is addressed to the Premier. Minister of Education. Referred to the Minister of Education. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about what our government is doing in support of Francophone education. And again, I have to thank the member opposite for allowing us the opportunity to stand up in this House and share that over the next year, our government will providing 
will be providing our French language boards with over $1.8 billion in grants for student needs. And this represents a $16 million increase over what was committed by the previous Liberal government. Do you know, we are uh, absolutely on the right trajectory in terms of supporting and growing our French education in this province. We'll continue to work with our partners and do the right thing because French education needs to be uh, an important part of our children's education. You know, I have family members that actually are teaching in Francophone schools, and I'm hearing firsthand the importance of, the, of making sure that people have choice. And the Francophone language and the Francophone education Response. in Ontario is absolutely paramount in the overall successful in landscape of education in this province. And again, I say merci beaucoup to a sick. Thank you. Thank you. The supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the minister's answer. But there are also about 50 to 70 teachers who will lose their job this summer. To the Premier again, such cuts will have a devastating effect on children's education in my riding. You might not know it, but about 60% of my constituents are francophone. We need more substitute teachers and we also need more teachers, regular teachers. We want francophone education in a constituency that is majority a majority of francophones. I have to share with the member opposite that the it's c'est dommage. It's too bad that it, it is really too bad that the people Order. opposite in the party are fear mongering. It doesn't matter what language you speak. Fear mongering is fear mongering, and this party just doesn't seem to get enough of it. Because the fact of the matter is, we're investing in francophone education in this province, and our partners, our education partners, know that we're sincere when we say that francophone languages and francophone education is paramount in importance to making sure that we have a robust education system in this province, and we're leading by example. And again, in terms of school boards, generally speaking, I say, Response. surely, surely when it comes to the waste that people are pointing to, they can find one, two, possibly four cents on the dollar within their administration as opposed to hitting the front line. Thank you. Thank you. The next question, the member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to my friend, the Minister of Education. Mr. Speaker, through you, I know that our government has been clear about our commitment to get education in Ontario back on track. This is a key priority for many parents in my riding of Ottawa West Nepean. For that to happen, it is clear that our students need to be prepared with the skills they require to succeed like being able to speak French. Mr. Speaker, with over 100,000 students enrolled in French language schools across Ontario, could the minister please tell us what she is doing to support French language education right here in Ontario? Questions to the Minister of Education. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Ottawa West Nepean, and I know he's doing great work on behalf of his riding and as a member of our caucus, I thank you for all you do. You lead with your heart, Jeremy, member, and I thank you for that. But I also want to say merci beaucoup to Sepo, who is here with us in the gallery as well. They are excellent advocates for our French public boards. I'm extremely proud of the investments our government is making to ensure the success of our French language education system here in Ontario. And I know they're leading by example, and I say merci beaucoup again for the manner in which they're leading and cohabitating and making sure capital dollars are well invested. They're leading by example in that regard, Speaker. Graduation rates are at historic highs and enrollment has increased. Our government is excited to have French language education in Ontario not only growing, but thriving. Just three weeks ago, my parliamentary assistant, the member Fox. from Niagara, or Niagara West, announced that our government is investing almost $20 million in projects and initiatives to support students, parents, and teachers in French language. Thank you very much. The supplementary question. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I would like to thank the Minister for her answer. I am very glad to know that our government recognizes the importance of Francophone education. I am also very proud that our government does so much to support students and families in our Francophone education system. Mr. Speaker, I know that this investment is essential and will provide a support for the Francophone community, a support that it needs. Could the minister please tell us more on what our government is doing to support Francophone school boards as well as their students in Ontario? Mr. Speaker, Minister des Affaires Francophone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would also like to thank the member for Ottawa West Nipian for his question. It's a very important one. I know that today in the galleries we have members of the CIPO, and all of us here in this in this house can recognize the very important work that they're doing for our francophone school boards. I'd like to thank you all. Next year, our government will provide these schools, these school boards, more than $1.8 billion. Mr. Speaker, this investment is essential and represents an, an, invest, an investment that is greater than what was provided by the previous government in 2018 2019. Mr. Speaker, our government will keep working with their partners in education. Thank you very much. The next question, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. This week is National Accessibility Week, and while we've made strides in progress in this province, it's thanks to disability rights activists around our towns and cities. Unfortunately, the previous government paid lip service to the goal of accessibility, and this government's on track to do the same. During the election campaign, the Premier promised stronger enforcement of accessibility laws, a clear strategy to meet accessibility standards, examining our building code requirements for accessibility provisions, and requiring design professionals to have accessibility training. But we didn't hear any announcement in the budget on this, and I'm wondering why there's no prioritization of accessibility during National Accessibility Week for this government. Uh, Minister of Finance. And Minister of Seniors and Accessibility. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank the member of opposition for raising the important question. I want to assure this House that this government takes our responsibilities for Ontario living with disabilities very seriously. Last week, we announced further details of our plan to partner with the Rick Hansen Foundation on their building certification program. This $1.3 million we're investing will allow us to perform accessibility audits over 200 buildings over the next two years. We know there's more to do, but it's also time for real action, and we are taking it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker. To put that in perspective to what the minister said, $1.3 million is less than what the premier of this government is spending on his own personal lawyer in his office, Mr. Gavin Teeth. People with disabilities deserve more from this government. We know that the last government talked a great talk but delivered very little. We know that Queen's Park, the very building in which you and I are working, is not fully accessible, and that is true across this province. Yeah. Health care, education, transportation, our spaces of recreation remain inaccessible, Speaker, and we are obliged by law to make this province fully accessible by 2025. Tomorrow, we are going to be introducing a private member's motion that will require us as a legislature to set clear targets on accessibility. I have a very clear question for the Premier or for the Minister. Will you be supporting this motion tomorrow? To the minister. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I will repeat what the opposition member said. 
The previous government last 15 years, they did very little, like uh, David only said. And last 15 years, NDP supported the last government. So, yeah. all the, you know, so you are the same team. Yeah. Okay. Now that we've now, Mr. That. Speaker, the sole question barrier, Mr. Only outlined, were also highlighted in the first two AODA reviews by the Charles Beer and Mayo Moran. This report is an indictment of the previous government, which your party supported for 15 years. Order. Mr. Speaker, our government is carefully reviewing Mr. Only's report, Response. which we made public faster than either previous report. And I will respond to your motion tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Restart the clock. The next question, the member for Perry Sound, Wisconsin. My question is for the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Ontario has a robust agriculture and agri-food sector, one that our government has long been an advocate for. Agriculture is a critical component of our province's economy, generating $39.5 billion per year and employing over 170,000 people. Our government is committed to ensuring this sector remains viable and sustainable into the future. This week, the minister met with the Ontario independent meat processors, including processors in the north, to discuss is issues facing the industry. According to the Ontario independent meat processors, total meat processing sales in Ontario is valued at $2.2 billion. Would the minister please tell the House how our government is helping to grow Ontario's meat processing industry? The question is to the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member from Paris Down Muskoka for his excellent question. Very good. This Monday, I had the pleasure of hosting a unique online roundtable discussion with Northern Ontario meat processors to hear firsthand some of the challenges affecting the sector. Our government is supporting meat processing to help ensure safe, high-quality food through a recent intake we opened through the Canadian Agriculture Partnership. Through a targeted intake in February for food safety improvements, 39 projects were approved to receive up to $509,000 in cost-sharing funding. These projects will focus on food safety initiatives while also helping processors grow and develop their business. I'm pleased to announce that a second intake opened on May the 24th, 2019, which will run to August the 30th. I encourage meat processors from around the province to apply for the second intake and look Response. forward to continuing to support the industry. Thank you. The supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the minister's hard work advocating on behalf of Ontario's meat processors to support some of the best meat products in the world processed right here in Ontario. Agriculture and agribusiness are of vital importance to our province's economy. Our government is committed to growing agriculture in the north and across Ontario while ensuring Ontarians consume safe and healthy food products. I know that farmers in northern Ontario appreciate having a government that listens to them and acknowledges the unique challenges that they face. Can the minister please tell the House how our government is supporting agriculture in the north? Here, here. Minister. Well, thanks again, Mr. Speaker, and thanks to the member for the question. Our government is working closely with representatives from northern Ontario to hear firsthand the ways we can work together to grow the industry and create good jobs. I want to thank the northern meat plants that took part and share their ideas. One of the areas that my ministry's advisory group is focusing on, led by my parliamentary assistant, is how our government can further grow agriculture in the north. Our government recently announced that we are investing more than $350,000 in two agriculture companies in Cochrane and Timmins, supporting five full-time jobs. I'm pleased to be working very closely on this file with the Minister of Energy, Northern Development, Mines and the Indigenous Affairs to create and protect jobs and boost local economies in Northern Ontario. 
We want to reinforce the North's competitive advantage and make sure Northern Ontario, Response. like the rest of the province, is equally open for business. I'm proud of the work our government has done so far and look forward to continuing to support agriculture in Northern Ontario. Thank you very much. The next question, the member for York Southwestern. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. On May 8, I met with a group of constituents who have been suffering due to poor air quality in their neighbourhood. For years now, residents of Stockyards, neighbourhood of York Southwestern, have been unable to go work in their neighbourhood or send their kids out to play for the toxic, noxious chemicals in the air emitted by industry in the neighbourhood. Can the Premier commit to founding a solution for the hard-working people of Stockyards once and for all, begin with the testing of the air quality in this neighbourhood? The Acting Premier, Minister of the Environment, referred to the Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks. Mr. Speaker, through you to the member, and thank you for the question. Um, air quality is, is of a central, essential issue for uh, for our government, and for our province. In fact, one of the issues that uh, one of the matters that we put forward in our Maiden Ontario Environment Plan was to advance the cause of real-time air monitoring. As the member likely knows, much air monitoring is done through modelling, and so we have both uh, invested in terms of the ability to uh, to have ministry resources do that monitoring, but also worked with industry so that they can do real-time monitoring as opposed to the modelling in the past. Um, I would be open, however, to, uh, to getting more details from the member about the specific situation in his neighbourhood. Obviously, we want to make sure that the standards are being met um, and that both the industry and the neighbourhood's concerns are being covered. Thank you. The supplementary question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, my question is to the Premier. Industry in the stockyards area have been fined over the years to no avail. All the while, residents have had to suffer and live in fear of their safety and well-being of their loved ones. No parents should have to explain to their children why their neighbourhood is always stinky or why they cannot go out and play with their friends. Will the minister commit to founding expedient and effective solution for the people of Stockyards and to restore their pride in their neighbourhood? Once again, Minister of the Environment. Mr. Speaker, um, I guess again, as I said to the member, I would be happy to uh, to meet with him and to understand the specifics of this issue. But of course, Mr. Speaker, air quality, water quality, the quality of our, our soils and land are important priorities for our government. And we also believe in making sure that there is pride in our communities, pride because we are making sure that we are dealing with the local environmental issues, like litter, like smell, like others. So I would be happy to uh, to sit with the member, understand the issue better, and respond directly to him. The next question, the member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Education. When our government introduced our first budget, it was clear that it was designed to protect what matters most and put Ontarians first. After years of waste and mismanagement in this province, finally there is a plan that will restore people's trust in government and put money in people's pockets. I know that some Ontarians weren't always able to access high quality and affordable childcare. Can the minister please explain how the government is bringing relief to Ontarians' parents and helping them to access more options when it comes to childcare? Questions to the Minister of Education. from Richmond Hill. You know, Speaker, she brings a certain spark to her job as MPP representing Richmond Hill, and she's doing a great job. But I have to share with you, Speaker, that since our office, uh, since we took office, our mandate has been very clear, and we want to protect what matters most. And that's why we introduced our Child Care Access and Relief from Expenses Tax Credit, or CARE for short. This tax credit will give parents, not the government, control over the child care decisions they make for their children. Mr. Speaker, this credits families in Ontario, with this credit I should say, families in Ontario could receive up to $6,000 for every child under the age of seven. 
$3,750 per child between the ages of 7 and 16, and families who support a child with severe disability Response. would be eligible for $8,250 per child, regardless of the age. This credit will allow parents to offset childcare expenses they may incur when starting a new job, working longer hours, or going back to school. The supplementary question. And thank you, the Minister, for understanding the need of our families. I am so glad that this government believes in empowering parents in my riding in Richmond Hill and all over the province to make these decisions that are best for the children and their families. It was always clear that the previous government simply did not listen to the people. That's why it is so pleasing to hear that finally we have a government that will support parents and put them in charge of making important decisions for their children. Could Minister please tell me more about the CARE tax credit and how it brings the greatest relief to parents and families in Ontario? Minister. Thank you for that. And we're going to be putting parents first. Parents and their children need to be at the centre of every decision that's get, that gets made. And this crucial support will provide over 300,000 Ontario families with funding up to 75 per cent of their eligible childcare expenses. Families will have the ability, Speaker, to choose the childcare option that is best suited to their children, including care in centres, in-home care, or even camps because we know that choosing the appropriate child care is one of the most important decisions a parent will ever make. Mr. Speaker, this will make child care for Ontario families more affordable and more accessible and flexible. And this will ensure parents, as again, will, as I said, will have choice to make the best decisions for their family. We cannot Response. understand how important this support for lower-income families could be. In some cases, the CARE tax credit might mean a parent can join the workforce or decide to work more hours. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question, the member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. A report was released on an average monthly rental rates across Canada. This report showed St. Catharines had moved up three spots, now making it the ninth most expensive city to rent in in all of Canada. The cost of a one-bedroom rose 5.2 per cent, and the cost of a two-bedroom rose 5 per cent, well above what the people's wages rose by. It's no secret that Niagara Region is facing an affordable housing crisis, and an increase in rental rates will push people further into poverty and even homelessness. Yet this government gutted pro projections for renters and removed rent, rent controls. Why is this government making renting more unaffordable for the people in St. Catharines? Yeah. Questions to the Premier. Minister of Municipal Affairs. Heard to the Minister of Municipal Affairs. And Speaker, and I, I want to thank the honourable member for uh, the question, and I appreciate uh, being in her riding on uh, on Friday. We had a, a, an exceptional uh, opening of an affordable housing uh, project, and I appreciate her advocacy uh, for that project when she was on council. Uh, Speaker, uh, again, part of our housing supply action plan and our bill, more homes, more choice, is we realize that there is a a record uh, low vacancy rate in this province, so probably a 17 or 18 year low. We have to have more purpose-built rental. That's why in our fall economic statement, uh, we announced that we would protect uh, existing tenants, but, but allow uh, uh, an environment with, without the rent control so that more purpose-built rental can be built in this province. And we need a lot of purpose-built rental speaker to be able to, to have Spons. a situation where we can, we can deal with that crisis. So I appreciate the honourable member uh, indicating that there is a problem in her riding. There's a problem, quite frankly, Speaker, all across this province. Thank you very much. The supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker. Yes, it was Friday that we did attend a grand opening of a new affordable housing built in St. Catharines, owned and operated by the Niagara Regional Housing. It was a big day for St. Catharines, as the issue of affordable housing was kind of addressed. However, with 85 new units, only a very small dent was made in the NRH housing wait list of 16 years, currently over 5,500 people. Wow. Mr. Speaker, it's been about 40 years since the last affordable housing unit was built, owned and operated by the Niagara Regional Housing Unit. Where, where built in St. Catharines, 
40 years ago was the last one. When will this government take a hard look at the crisis happening now and allocate funding to assist the Niagara region in building more affordable housing units? Minister. Speaker, uh, that's exactly what we're doing, Speaker. You know, on Friday, I acknowledge that uh, one of the reasons why our government uh, announced the community housing renewal strategy before we tabled Bill 108 was because of advocates like the ones in Niagara Region who indicated that we needed to do a clear, make a clear signal right across this province that we want to leverage every single dollar in the system to build, renew, and expand our community housing system. That's why we did it. Prior to the, uh, the tabling of Bill 108, the More Homes, More Choice, we want our message to our 47 service managers, Speaker, and our two Indigenous program administrators is we want to work with you. We want to, to work with you and leverage every dollar you have in the system, and, and importantly, Speaker, every dollar the federal government has in the system. We acknowledge Response. and thank the federal government for their renewed interest on the housing file, but all three levels of government, all of our profit, uh, non-for-profit uh, partners, and all of our, our Hope. Thank you. That concludes our question period for today. The Minister of Education has informed me she has a point of order. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I mentioned before we just recently announced the opening of uh, Fiola Legere, and uh, I mentioned it was in Curtis, but in actual fact, it's in Bonneville. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a deferred vote on the motion for second reading of Bill 108, an act to amend various statutes with respect to housing, other development, and various other matters. Call in the members. This is a five-minute bell.
Will the members please take their seats? I hate to interrupt the conversations, but we have to vote. <laughs> On May the 8th, 2019, Mr. Clark moved second reading of Bill 108. All those in favour of the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Bethenfall. Mr. Bethenfall. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Mr. Yurk. Mr. Yurk. Ms. Mulroney. Ms. Mulroney. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Tabolo. Mr. Tabolo. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Letcher. Mr. Letcher. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Down. Mr. Down. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kalandra. Mr. Kalandra. Ms. Serma. Ms. Serma. Mr. Parsa. Mr. Parsa. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Ms. Trantafalopoulos. Ms. Trantafalopoulos. Mr. Sicaria. Mr. Sicaria. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Pa Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Carahalli. Mrs. Carahalli. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Ms. Kanjin. Ms. Kanjin. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Cramp. Mr. Cramp. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mr. Anon. Mr. Anon. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sanders. Mr. Sanders. Mr. Smith, Peterborough Quartz. Mr. Smith, Peterborough Quartz. Mr. Baum. Mr. Baum. Mr. Cazetto. Mr. Cazetto. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Kenapathy. Mr. Kenapathy. Mr. Babikian. Mr. Babikian. Mr. Babber. Mr. Babber. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Tanagasa. Mr. Tanagasa. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Madam Jelena. Madam Jelena. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Vantal. Mr. Vantal. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Begum. Ms. Begum. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Carpoche. Madam. Monsieur. Sorry, Monsieur Monta. Monsieur Monta. Mr. Ms. Linda. Ms. Linda. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Style. Ms. Style. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Ms. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller, Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller, Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Burns McGowan. Ms. Burns McGowan. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Monsieur Bourguin. Monsieur Bourguin. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rakosovich. Mr. Rakosovich. Mr. Harden. Mr. Harden. Ms. Monty Farrell. Ms. Monty Farrell. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. The ayes are 64, the nays are 41. The ayes being 64 and the nays being 41, I declare the motion carried. <laughs> Pursuant to the order of the House dated May 28, 2019, the bill stands referred to the Standing Committee on Justice Policy. We now have a deferred vote on a motion for closure on the motion for third reading of Bill 100 an act to implement budget measures and to enact, amend, and repeal various statutes. Call in the members. This is a five-minute bell. On May the 15th, 2019, Mr. Fidelli moved third reading of Bill 100, an act to implement budget measures and to enact, amend, and repeal various statutes. 
Mr. Downey has moved that the question now be put. All those in favour of Mr. Downey's motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Downey, Mr. Walker, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Bethenthal, Mr. Fidelli, Mr. Fidelli, Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, Mr. Yurick, Mr. Yurick, Mr. Ms. Mulroney, Ms. Mulroney, Mr. Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark, Mr. Yakubuski, Mr. Hardiman, Mr. Hardiman, Mr. Hardiman, Mr. Hardiman, Mr. Tabolo, Mr. Tabolo, Mr. Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barrett, Mrs. Marteau, Mrs. Marteau, Mr. McDonnell, Mr. McDonnell, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey, Ms. Fullerton, Ms. Fullerton, Ms. Scott, Ms. Scott, Ms. Jones, Ms. Jones, Mr. Cho Scarborough North, Mr. Cho Scarborough North, Mr. Rickford, Mr. Rickford, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Miller, Perry Salmascoco, Mr. Miller, Perry Salmascoco, Mr. Lecce, Mr. Lecce, Mr. Coe, Mr. Coe, Mr. Gill, Mr. Gill, Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kalandra. Mr. Kalandra. Ms. Serma. Ms. Serma. Mr. Parson. Mr. Parson. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Ms. Triantafilopoulos. Triantafilopoulos. Mr. Sakaria. Mr. Sakaria. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Osterhoff. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Carhollier. Mrs. Carhollier. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Ms. Kanjin. Ms. Kanjin. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Cramp. Mr. Cramp. Ms. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mr. Anon. Mr. Anon. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sanders. Mr. Sanders. Mr. Smith. Peterborough Court. Mr. Smith. Peterborough Court. Mr. Bounce. Mr. Bounce. Mr. Cazetto. Mr. Cazetto. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Dunlop. Mr. Kennepathy. Mr. Kennepathy. Mr. Bibikian. Mr. Bibikian. Mr. Babber. Mr. Babber. Mr. Pang. Mr. 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 Tanagasa. Mr. Tanagasa. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sabau. Mr. Sabau. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Monsieur Bisson. Monsieur Bisson. Madam Gellin. Madam Gellin. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Vantoff. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Sapp. Ms. Sapp. Ms. Begum. Ms. Begum. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Mr. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Yermont. Ms. Yermont. Mr. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Styles. Ms. Styles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Ms. Burns McGowan. Ms. Burns McGowan. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Bourguin. Mr. Bourguin. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Kosovich. Mr. Kosovich. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Hardin. Ms. Monty Farrell. Ms. Monty Farrell. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Couteau. Mr. Couteau. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. The ayes are 64, the nays are 43. The ayes being 64 and the nays being 43, I declare the motion carried. <laughs> Mr. Fidelli has moved third reading of Bill 100, an act to implement budget, budget measures and to enact, amend, and repeal various statutes. Is it the pleasure of the House that the motion carry? No. I heard some noes. All those in favour of the motion, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, will please say nay. Yeah. In my opinion, the ayes have it. Call in the members. This is another five minute bell. Mr. Fidelity has moved third reading of Bill 100, an act to implement budget measures and to enact, amend, and repeal various statutes. All those in favour of the motion will please rise one at a time and be counted by the clerk. Mr. Fidelity, Mr. Walker, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Bethlenthal, Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, Mr. Yurick, Mr. Yurick, Mr. 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 Mulroney, Mr. Mulroney, Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark, Mr. Yakabuski, Mr. Yakabuski, Mr. Hardiman, Mr. Hardiman, Mr. Bolo, Mr. Tabolo, Mr. Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barrett, Mrs. Marteau, Mrs. Marteau, Mr. McDonnell, Mr. McDonnell, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey, Ms. Fullerton, Ms. Fullerton, Ms. Scott, Ms. Scott, Ms. Jones. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Miller Perry Salmascoco. Mr. Miller Perry Salmascoco. Mr. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kalandra. Mr. Kalandra. Mr. Kalandra.
Landau. Ms. Serma. Ms. Serma. Mr. Parson. Mr. Parson. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Ms. Triantafilopoulos. Ms. Triantafilopoulos. Mr. Mr. Sicario. Mr. Sicario. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Osterhoff. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Carhalli. Mrs. Carhalli. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Ms. Kanji. Ms. Kanji. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Cramp. Mr. Cramp. Mrs. Wise. Mrs. Wise. Mr. Anand. Mr. Anand. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Smith. Peter Barrow Quartha. Mr. Smith. Peter Barrow Quartha. Mr. Bauma. Mr. Bauma. Mr. Cazetto. Mr. Cazetto. Mr. Dunlop. Mr. Dunlop. Mr. Canapathy. Mr. Canapathy. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Pay. Mr. Pay. Mr. Tanagas. Mr. Tanagas. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and begin by the Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Madam Jelena. Madam Jelena. Mr. Tabbs. Mr. Tabbs. Mr. Singh. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Bantoff. Mr. Bantoff. Mr. Bissell. Mr. Bissell. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Satler. Ms. Satler. Ms. Begum. Ms. Begum. Mr. Mamakov. Mr. Mamakov. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Ms. Karpoche. Ms. Karpoche. Mr. Yamanta. Mr. Yamanta. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Stiles. Ms. Stiles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller. Hamilton East Stony Creek. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Mr. Burns McGowan. Burns McGowan. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Borgwest. Mr. Borgwest. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rakosovich. Mr. Rakosovich. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Hardin. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Couteau. Mr. Couteau. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. The ayes are 64, the nays are 43. The ayes being 64 and the nays being 43, I declare the motion carried. <laughs> be it resolved that the bill do now pass and be entitled as in the motion. There being no further business, this House stands in. Is there a point of order? Okay. <laughs> this House stands in recess until 3 p.m. <laughs>